sound. In this video, we'll be going over all the material that we created with the phone recorder that I recorded on my vacation. We'll start by cleaning them up, making sure that they are loops here in WaveLab, and make sure that they are all sort of mastered so that they're ready to use. That goes hand in hand with the Lego approach of production that I've mentioned in one of my earlier videos. We are creating the individual assets because we already know what the giant soundscape will be like. So we are focusing on the individual tiny sounds. It's really interesting because right before I started creating this video, my fellow sound design colleague from Finland, well actually he's from Turkey, but he works in Finland. He used to work at Remedy and I've been in touch with them a couple of times, posted an article on asoundeffect.com about how to make sounds for a certain game and the Horus Station by creating a compelling game audio experience with minimal resources, which goes very much hand in hand with the stuff that we are creating here by using our phones to create assets that we can actually use in a game. It's the minimum of a recorder that we have been using to create these sounds. You should totally check out this article, asoundeffect.com forward slash blog. It's the top one at the moment, or you can just find it in there. As you can see, designing the desolate sounds of the Horus station how to create a compelling game audio experience with minimal resources go check it out now clean up these files so what i want to do is that i want to go over all these sounds in wave lab and i want to clean them up by that i mean i want to go over them and try and figure out which parts of all these sounds can we use which can't we use what kind of frequencies are present do we need to alter them a little bit with some eq or something like that let's go over it This sound here is pretty much useless. There are these peaks, as you can see. These, of course, need to go if this was to be a file that we could use. These transients over here are by other people or noises in the background and so on. This is wind in the background and my daughter's uh, saying something in the beginning. So we need to get rid of that. Now we have this problem that this is only at about minus 24, 25 decibels full scale. And that's a problem because we cannot crank up the volume that much without creating a lot of noise. Check this out. If we normalize, and previously in WaveLab it used to be the N key that would normalize, but that's not no longer the way it is. So we need to click process and level. And here we have the normalizer. So I want to normalize it to, let's say, minus six. Yeah, that's fine. As you can see, there's quite some high sounds, some high frequencies here that are practically unwanted. What we could do with that is that we could say we want to add the curve EQ. This is just, this is one of my favorite go-to EQs um, that I use. And because when we play back, you can see the spectrum here, but then you can also see whatever you're changing and what the actual output is. So let's just make it to 30 decibels and see here. This here is, as you can see, this frequency right here, there's apparently some notch here that we need to get rid of. So we can add a point here and just kill it. So if we get rid of a little bit of the lows as well, this sound might be possible to use as a background noise that can mask a lot of other sounds whenever we're making a city soundscape or something like that. But I don't want to kill it all as much as we did over here with the highs because that just needed to die. No, we'll probably go with the lows like minus six like this. But like I said, this sound is practically useless. So let's move on and take a look at some of the other sounds. Remember to switch off our curvy EQ here, back to normal here, and switch it off in our chain so that we don't bother all the other sounds with this. It's a quite common thing, and in the previous versions of WaveLab, it will always have this effect chain activated upon startup, which was a big problem because sounds would then sound different than you would expect, and if you didn't notice, then suddenly you were editing a sound that you didn't understand why it was sounding the way it was. 
Actually, what was interesting about all these sounds that we recorded and what I want to be using in the example that I'm going to show you in Unity is all the cicadas and rain noises. So let's find those and don't bother with all these wall of sound. Yes, this here is a cicada. It's not very loud, so I suggest we normalize it just a little bit just to make sure that it's louder so that we can turn it down inside our editor instead. Normally, I would suggest that you make sure that you mix your actual assets in the volume that you're going to be using anyway, but that's not necessarily a thing if you don't know the volume of the overall mix to begin with. And then I suggest cranking up the volume because then you can always turn it down, especially if you do it digitally like this and you just crank up the volume in here. That may create some sort of distortion and a little bit of other things, but it's not an analog gain. So it's not adding stuff to it. It's just making it louder. So you can always get rid of it by just lowering the volume or subtle EQing afterwards. This here is actually very interesting because we can click over here, we can make a selection and click analyze and say we want to see the audio selection and then it captures it and shows us whatever we want it and whatever we select it in our spectrum and all these other things. And this is fairly interesting because there are some action going on down here between 86 and 300 and what, 50, 60, something like that. And that's a problem, not necessarily because they are there, but in the long run, you really should get use of unwanted frequencies like this. So let's go back into our curve EQ here and play it back and see what's wrong. As you can see, we can hardly see them. So we go up here to analyze and we say that we want to analyze the playback instead, which means that then we can see it over here in our spectrum again when we have a live playback. You can also see it down here, that this is probably where all the action is going on. It's very, very subtle, but in general, we don't want low frequencies or anything like that that you cannot hear anyway. So let's go back into Curve EQ and take a look at it. And what we can see here in Curve EQ, I've turned off the sound, but if we press play and say minus 30 decibels, we still can't see it. So if we turn on Curve EQ, and say that we actually want it to kill everything below here. That now means that whatever was here is now gone. So we can press A and that opens up this little process window here and we can say process in place and we process it in place. The point of this is that if you get rid of these unwanted frequencies, the same thing goes for high passing. If you kill stuff with high passing, like turn up the high pass cutoff until you can hear it having an effect. And then if you start turning it down again so that you suddenly can't hear it anymore, you've gotten rid of the low frequencies that you don't want and don't need anyway. In the long run, when you do a sum, like a mix down of everything, then this will come into your advantage because that means that you don't have to ha handle as much bass control as you would have if like 50 sounds would have this tiny, tiny, let's say, minus 60 sound at 50, 50 hertz. Get rid of all these uh, frequencies that you don't want. Oh yeah, this here was actually one of my favorites. It's not the rain, so but we, we'll go over this one quickly. Here, we have this noise. If we add some sort of compression to this, just let's just use whatever comes with, with WaveLab here and loop this area by pressing the numpad forward slash. Let's kill the holds and the release and all that. Kill the auto makeup. Let's open up our Curve EQ. Take a look at our Curve EQ and see where the frequencies are that we want. Like 
that. We add an effect here. Let's just use a standard reverb here from Steinberg because we don't want to go into these effects. We just want to use some reverb here. Uh, one of my favorites is basically just crank up the size. Let's say, let's say five seconds here, pre-delay, diffusion. With a little bit of nifty EQ work, this could totally work. And we could totally use it in a track, in a piece of music, or whatever we want to use it for. Or it could be an alarm noise in a sci-fi game. That's pretty easy. Still, it's recorded with my phone, so we got to use what we have. Which means that it has a pretty bad spectrum for its recording. But that's what we got to deal with. That's why we're doing this cleanup process right now. Here we have light rain, and that's one of the things that we want to be using because we want to make a rainy forest soundscape because of the level that we're going to be using this in. Let's cut this part out. I'll control A and K to go zoom out. And we could actually say normalize to minus six. Should be fine. There are some transients here. Because this one, this transient here, some of these transients could be okay, but the problem with this one is that it's very significant, so, and it's very easily recognizable. So if we have a loop, these would probably be really, really, really easy to recognize. So what we want to do, if we had this in, let's say, Wise or other tools where randomization was a little easier, we could split it up into four parts and have it randomized between each other and then say that this part here could only come, let's say, every 10 times or so, so that it's slightly more unrealistic that this would occur every time the loop continues. But if we go over the spectrum here, This sound has, if you go into analysis again, let's say audio selection and go over here. Here, you can see it has a lot of low frequencies and we don't want those because this is supposed to be a background sound. All the bass that we want is probably in all the upfront, in your face action sounds or other things, or at least we need some sort of bass control. I'm not saying that this is a lot of bass, but it's enough to kill our overall summing whenever we get to that process later. Kill it like this. Go into analysis and say that we want to see the playback. And over here in our spectrum now, you can see that all these are gone. And then process it by pressing A. That's for render. I don't know why A is render, but it's always been like that. Process in place. Yes, please, because this is an untitled file. And we save the file. This sound here is particularly interesting because we can use that if ever we go indoors. And I'll show you an example about that. We need to get rid of these transients. We can mark them and press Control Delete, which means that it will then delete them. And then it'll do it sort of like a small crossfade between what was ever was before and after the selection. So then it goes away. Just be careful because if you do this on a click, you might actually have the click be part of the crossfade if your selection is really, really small. So in here, control and delete. It does this smooth delete, I think they call it. Let's go for some... Slight normalization, minus six. I usually never go to zero because I don't like all bits used. That's just a preference of mine. As you see over here, we have in our spectrum, there's lots of frequencies that we don't want. We don't necessarily want anything below, let's say 200. So again, let's clean up this file. That might even help us get rid of that airplane that is in the background. So 
but if we process this, make sure we save it. You see, in this file, it's pretty interesting because it has these transients here. But all these transients are not as annoying as the previous one because they don't necessarily stand out in the same way. So we can actually keep these in our loop. Obviously, they do stand out and they will, if this loop was shorter, be really, really recognizable. But that's not necessarily a point because we have a one minute loop here, which we can use. Of course, you shouldn't normally be using one minute loops just for everything. But in this case, we're just going to go over like a breeze that there are no memory requirements because we're working on a PC and we're not working for a console game. Right. My programmer would love me if I said that in actual production. It's not always that you want to get rid of these low frequencies or highs or whatever you want to do, but this is like mastering each file on their own before they go into the game. It's a really, really smart process because if you make sure that all sounds are kind of mastered to what you want before they're in the game and don't rely on the end mix and the end mastering to solve your problems, then you will have an easier time getting a cleaner mix in the long run. I've now shown you some of the basics that I do for normalizing and preparing all these materials. It's really, really simple, just high passing, making sure some frequencies are cut so that they fit. These files, they go hand in hand with some of the stuff I've been talking about before as Lego material. What I mean by that is that I am right now concentrating on creating these individual assets. Inside my head, I already know or at least I have some idea about how all these rain sounds combined will sound when you walk around that environment. This means that I'm focusing on creating individual assets like these, making sure that each of them sound good, they have the correct mastering, no low frequencies and so on. It could of course have been a different kind of mastering, but that's what's the mastering I'm going for in this one. I've created these building blocks that I know in my game, when combined as this magic Lego structure, will become the thing that I want to work with. I'm thinking about making a video about uh, creating some explosions or some door things because I have specifically in the past made explosions where I used my Lego production to finish these by just creating the individual assets like debris here, click sound here sand here, the boom here, and so on. And then I know in the game that when we put it all together, it will just be a cool explosion. But that's it for this video. I've now cleaned up all these files. Next step is to put them all into Unity and show that we can create a trustworthy soundscape that you can use in a video game. Just by recording them with your phone, the recorder in itself is not important. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you really like all this material that I put up here, why not hit the like and subscribe button? And don't forget to head over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel and make me afford the time I take off to create all this content for you. By going over there, you also gain access to counseling, career advice, help with your projects and so on, depending on what tier you choose. And you may, of course, and of course, and you may, of course, always contact me if you like, if you have any questions and we can talk about it and see if there's any way I can help you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video about putting this stuff into Unity. Oh, hey, and while you're at it, check the video above. It's about how to destroy a piano and make sure that it sounds really awesome. It was left over in my new house. You might find it interesting.